boy, 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 I got a lot of, I got a lot of stuff to say. I got a lot of stuff to say um, for this week in college basketball because there's a lot to say. What happened in week number 16 of the season as the final week of the regular season is upon us, everybody. Um, so, you know, Juwan Howard, that's the first thing we got to go over. Suspended for the rest of the year, or at least the rest of the regular season, at least. Um, he'll be back at the conference tournament. And, you know, several other assistants were either fined or suspended on both sides of that Michigan-Wisconsin altercation that we talked about last Sunday, that happened last Sunday. And it, it, it just is what it is. Um, I said my piece on that already last Sunday. Um, some more teams have clinched their regular season titles in their respective conferences. Iona has clinched the MAC. That's the M A A C, not the uh, not the MAC as in the Mid American. Bryant clinched the NEC, the Northeast Conference. Colgate had locked up the Patriot League. Cleveland State clinched the Horizon. Gonzaga um, had already basically clinched the West Coast Conference, but it just really needed one more game to clinch it all the way through. Um, Longwood and Winthrop won the North and South Divisions in the Big South. Jacksonville State, their only season in the A-Sun. Remember, they're, they're only here for one year, and then they're going to the Conference USA. They won the A-Sun West. Liberty won the East Division. Chattanooga got the soak on. Um, and then there were some others. You know, the Texas State of the Sun Belt, they won the Sun Belt regular season title. The tournament for the Sun Belt will start this week. Um, UNC Wilmington has clinched a share. Towson also has a share of it, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute here. My boy is over at UNT. Second straight week I watched UNT basketball. Tyler Perry with a clutch three. He was one, he was 0 for 9 at one point. He, he, he got a clutch three against Louisiana Tech. That won UNT the CUSA West Division title. 14 straight wins for UNT. Middle Tennessee has wrapped up the East Division as well, so both those teams will be top seeds in the conference tournaments in the CUSA. So that is going to be interesting. Northern Iowa, it was a big one. I didn't. I ended up not watching this, but it was a big one. Northern Iowa, Loyola, there was seeding situations there. Loyola lost, unfortunately, in a thrilling game in overtime, and Northern Iowa won the Missouri Valley regular season title after starting 2-5. and five. So, you and I is number one to the number one seed. Loyola, because of tiebreakers and stuff like that, remember what I was talking about, like Drake, they lost twice to Drake. They've dropped all the way down to the four seed. So, pure insanity. Pure insanity there. And Providence. Praise be the Providence. They've won the Big East title for the first time. They blew out Creighton on Saturday. A.J. Reeves with 23 points on him. 23 points. Good stuff right there. Good stuff. So, might as well go back up a little bit and let's talk some more, you know, college basketball. Let's talk some more stuff here. Um, Dan Hurley, unfortunately, he got ejected for literally no reason against Villanova. Uh, UConn did beat Villanova, though. So, that, that helped Providence greatly in their quest that they succeeded in, you know, with Adama Sanogo just tearing up all the cats. I mean, Oklahoma got whipped by Texas Tech, but they bounced back on Saturday in overtime. We yeah, were forced to watch the end of that game. You know, it took like 77 years uh, between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Yes, Oklahoma got whipped by Texas Tech. The game against Oklahoma State doesn't really help them that much since Oklahoma State isn't going to the tournament at all. Iowa... However, Iowa, big win against Michigan State. They they whipped Michigan State like it was nobody's business. Sparty, however, Sparty said, okay, let's regroup. Let's bounce back. Let's do something about this, you know. We're talking Tyson Walker with a clutch three late in the game with like two seconds left to go. Clutch three to beat Purdue. And this is despite the fact that Jade Nivey and Zach Eddy had 40-plus points on their own. Like, this is despite the fact. I mean... Aside from those two guys for Purdue, um, nobody else decided to step up. And that was a big thing, along with the many, many fouls this game had. That's why the game took like two and a half hours, as usual, with college basketball. You know, so many fouls were just 
some of these were unnecessary odd Purdue guys, you know, but it is what it is. Uh, so I, I, I was just sitting here completely confused. Uh, so I, I don't know. Like, it just is what it is there with Sparty, you know, an inconsistent team, but they're still in a good place in the Big Ten. Um, one team I forgot to mention was Murray State. They whipped Belmont to destroy. They destroyed them. They won the OVC outright with K.J. Williams going off for 30. And Murray State, you know, they, along with Belmont, get, you know, despite the fact that Belmont lost on Thursday, you know, they get the bye. Both teams get the double bye in the OVC tournament. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment because there is a huge controversy regarding one of the conference tournaments. Uh, Oregon, sadly for Oregon, they did not get what they needed to do. They did not get it done this week. They lost to UCLA. They lost to USC. That's not going to get it done. Despite the fact that Bill Walton can say whatever he wants to say about the Pac-12 getting eight teams in the tournament. Yeah, Arizona State's getting hot. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really consider Arizona State a threat unless they win the Pac-12 tournament at this time. So, you know, Oregon losing this week again. It's just another bubble team that's – their bubble is bursting at, at a fast, fast rate. We've been talking about Oregon – for the past few weeks here, and their bubble is bursting in the worst type of way. Like, they, you know, they, they beat UCLA, but they lost to USC. Excuse me, I, I think I said that they lost to UCLA. They beat UCLA in overtime. But again, you know, you can't lose, you can't beat UCLA and then proceed to lose to USC. You have to beat both of them. You have to beat both of them. And, you know, a game that just finished up, you know, not even like 10 to 15 minutes ago, Malachi Branham, you know, went off against Illinois, and Alfonso Plummer for the Illini went off against Ohio State. You know, Ohio State Illinois had a war on Thursday night, and Ohio State were able, the Buckeyes were able to beat the Illini. However, however, Maryland, oh yes, the Maryland team that's been marred by issues the entire season, the Maryland team that's under 500, the Maryland team that held Ohio State to like 30 plus 30% shooting from the field. Maryland out rebounded Ohio State, got second chance points, made the defensive plays they needed to make, and the Terps got the huge, huge upset on the 20th anniversary of their national championship, which was surprised me. I forgot. I guess I guess I'm stupid because I forgot that Maryland has a national championship, but that that does not matter right now. Maryland having a national championship does not matter right now because what matters right now is Ohio State. And Ohio State is a team that I've been saying, you know, doesn't really deserve four seat consideration. That does not help them at all. And we'll talk a little bit more about the Big Ten in a moment, but you know, a big week for the conference, it's with a kind of a whipper. You know, Illinois was able to bounce back against Michigan, though. That that is a huge one. So, you know, that that's huge there. And then JD Notes A for Arkansas. Oh boy, what a what a performance by him. He put up 30 against Kentucky. Like, you know, you you still got Oscar Shibway putting up double doubles like it's nobody business. You know, Kentucky was tenacious. Kentucky was out there. Kentucky was playing. But I mean, Arkansas was up 15 to two at one point. And they knew, Arkansas knew, with the Sharks in attendance, which was surprising me, why are there Sharks? But Arkansas, huge victory the past two Saturdays. That is the type of stuff you need. Arkansas should be a lock, you know, for a top four seed at this point. This is a team that, you know, I think has really improved with the big wins because a lot of people were kind of off on them earlier in the season. I think one of my thumbnails had Hofstra, you know, beating them early in the season. I think it was like, like with three or four of the regular season. That was, that was back in like early November, December, you know, type deal right there with the whole Hofstra beating Arkansas thing. And then Arkansas had another bad loss as well. But that does not matter now. And Arkansas's resume is looking mighty good. And they have a couple more opportunities this week to get it done. They can do it. I think they can do it. They can they can submit themselves as the top four seed in the SEC tournament. They can submit themselves as a top four seed on the seed as well. So I just think, you know, this is a this is a good one. I, I just really think this is a good 
Arkansas team. Tennessee, speaking of Tennessee, they come up clutch on defense once again. Again, this Tennessee defense is no slouch. We've talked about this. They've had some of the ugliest games I think we've seen all season, and they did it again. You know, Jamari Smith had a great day, but Auburn fell once again. And that's like another Saturday where Auburn, you know, loses the game. But that wasn't the only team that lost on Saturday. No, 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 no. That was the old, that was not the only team that lost on Saturday because Arizona, they lost to Colorado. Baylor split with Kansas. And because Kansas just could not seem to make any foul shots, you, you got you got an interesting battle between Flo Fampa, James Akincho, Adam Flagler, going up against Jalen Wilson, Ochai Abaji, and Christian Bryan. You know, but I mean the fouls, the, the bad foul shots that were not going down. We're talking... You know, there was some foul shots towards the end of the game where Kansas needed to make them, and they couldn't make them. And they shot 28 three-pointers, which is not the way to go. Not the way to go because they couldn't, they couldn't make the threes either. And then you had TCU upsetting Texas Tech, you know, as well. So the Big 12, you know, not over just yet. Not over just yet. Um, and St. Mary's, they, they beat Zaga. Huge, huge win right there late on Saturday night. What a game by St. Mary's. I mean, there was some crazy, crazy plays in the later stages of the game, including a nasty, nasty duck on Drew Timmy. Like, my God, I did not expect that. What do you mean? So, seven of the top ten lose on Saturday, and that's not even the worst part, because one, two, three, four, five, and six lost on the road, <laughs> which is insanity to me. Like, wow. One of the craziest Saturdays in quite a long time. I, I don't think we're going to get another Saturday like that. I don't think. But now, now we got to talk this week. Let's, let's talk about it because this is a huge, huge week for college basketball. You know, it's March. You know, the last day of February doesn't really mean anything. It's technically March. It's technically March. It is time for the madness the true madness to come. And Monday night, Baylor, Texas. Get to it. Get to that game. There's some bubble action going on, you know, throughout the week, but I want to focus on some other games here as, you know, there's some huge ones. Providence Villanova, part two. Part one was great, but part two this Tuesday, going to be even funner. Purdue, Wisconsin as well. You know, the Big Ten is not settled just yet. Cincinnati, Houston. The AAC is not settled just yet. Arizona, UCLA. Arizona, you know, couldn't beat Colorado, so the Pac-12 isn't settled just yet. Um, Wednesday is a little bit harder, but I mean, you know, you know, there's UConn, Creighton, LSU, Arkansas, Texas A&M, Alabama. If that tickles your fancy, you know, because Alabama's also one of those teams trying to improve their seeding lines. Arkansas, another team trying to improve their seeding lines. But we'll talk a little bit more about Arkansas's big game in just a moment. And then you got Thursday night, Michigan State, Ohio State, Iowa, Michigan. Huge games there. You know, the Big Ten, again, like I said, not settled just yet. And then Saturday. Saturday and Sunday are going to be the biggest, one of two of the biggest days in college basketball. Two of the biggest days in college basketball this year. Uh, my goodness, we got a cornucopia of games because you know the big, a lot of conferences aren't decided just yet. You know the Big East has been decided, at least in the major conferences anyway. Some of the major conferences have been decided, but you know, Big East has been decided. So we just need to figure out what the hell's going on with some of the other conferences. And Saturday first, let's get the Saturday first. You got Alabama, LSU. Arkansas, Tennessee. Arkansas, Tennessee should be huge. Kentucky, Florida as well. You know, Florida is a bubble team, so all three of these SEC games are going to be huge. And then you got Indiana, Purdue, Texas, Kansas, Iowa State, Baylor, North Carolina, Duke in Coach K's final regular season game, the Ohio Valley Conference Championship, which, you know, is going to be crazy because, you know, there could be a bid stealer in there. And then U.S. UCLA to wrap up the night. What a Saturday that is. Just munch on that. It's going to be a huge day of college basketball. And then the action doesn't stop. Because Sunday, you got Memphis, Houston, Michigan, Ohio State, the Missouri Valley Championship, you know, and, Il and Illinois, Iowa. 
huge, huge, huge Saturday and Sunday. Huge weekend. Cannot wait. I'm excited for it because, again, you know, some of these conferences have not been decided just yet. Um, the AAC, the American Athletic Conference, not decided yet. Houston is still leading right now. The Atlantic 10, not decided just yet. I am going to be watching a huge game between VCU and St. Louis on Saturday. Um, the a hits not decided yet. Davidson's still leading out front. The ACC, not decided yet. Duke, Notre Dame, and North Carolina are all in position you know, to win the ACC. So that's why I said there's some bubble games on Monday. Don't just look at Baylor, Texas. Look at North Carolina. They're playing somebody else this week. I forgot who they're playing. They're, it's not done yet. The Big 12, oh no, it's not decided just yet. Kansas, Baylor, Texas Tech, and the slimmest of chances for Texas to get to that conference title, you know. And then the Big 10. The Big 10 is a wild one. You know, Ohio State has three games left. Illinois, Purdue, Wisconsin just have two. And all four teams are looking for something big. Can these can one of these four teams win the Big Ten, you know, and cement themselves with the top seed? Because the top because the top, you know, one and two seeds are gonna be, you know it's gonna be interesting to see. Because I mean the, a lot of people are saying like there's eight teams that can win the championship this year. And I think there's the, I think there's plenty of teams that can win the championship. It's not cookie cutter like last year, in which I said I remember saying last year that it was going to be Baylor and Gonzaga. I don't think it's clear cut this year, so you know it is what it is. Again, the CAA still needs to be decided. You know, UNC Wilmington has a share, but Towson can also take a share. You know, and we'll talk about that. You know, because y'all remember that Towson Delaware game that got suspended like a month or two ago. Yeah, that game is now for a share of the CAA regular season title. The Ivy League is still, you know, needing to be decided. Like, Harvard can't go. Harvard hosts the tournament, but they can't go to it. So it'll be Princeton, Yale, Penn, and Cornell in the Ivy League tournament. We know about the MAC. The Mid-American has the top eight going, and we're still trying to figure out what the top eight will be. Mid-Eastern Conference, the MEAC. Norfolk State clinched the share of the MEAC. So, you know, that's huge there. Again, Missouri Valley is going to be a wild, wild conference tournament as it usually is. Arch Madness is wild each and every year. Cannot wait to watch the Missouri Valley Championship on Sunday. Uh, the Mountain West still needs to be decided right now. Boise State has a little bit more of a lead, but, you know, they, they can do it. Again, Bryant, you know, won the Northeast. And the Ohio Valley, again, we know Murray State, 18-0 in conference, just two losses on the season. You know, one of them was a bat, was a blowout to Auburn, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. And then the Pac-12 still needs to be decided. In fact, USC and Arizona, that, that could be huge right there, you know, for the Pac-12. You know, the SEC still needs to be decided as well. Auburn, Kentucky, Arkansas, and Tennessee, all right there for a top, the top seed, you know, it, it's going to be huge, you know, there's still some conferences that need to be decided, you know, and the big, and one of the big ones is also the WAC, yeah, the WAC, because New Mexico State, yeah, they lost to Chicago State, yeah, yeah, that, Chicago State, I know, right, crazy, so, you know, it's going to be a huge, 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 huge week, and let me tell you, there are a couple of conference tournaments. We talked about two of them already. The Ohio Valley, Missouri Valley, and also the Big South. That one is going to be, those three conferences will get their tournaments wrapped up this week. Others that start this week, the West Coast, the SoCon. We don't, I don't, haven't seen the SoCon bracket just yet. The Sun Belt starts this week. The CAA will start this week. The Northeast Conference, Summit League. You know, the Summit League, same Summit League that has been dominated by South Dakota State. And the Patriot League, their attorneys will start. Um, there's question. There's a couple questions left that I have here. Is the A10 going to be a one bid conference? Like I said, I'm going to watch that VCU St. Louis game. So we're trying to figure out is the A10 going to be a one bid conference this year? COVID also said, "Hey, TCU Kansas, let's do a two game 
a three-day type deal. So that's going to be huge there. You know, what is Arkansas ceiling? Again, I'm trying to figure that out because a lot of people want to say, you know, Chicago, or, or, or Arkansas. The Arkansas is not this type of team. This is a good Arkansas team. I don't know what y'all are smoking. And then, you know, the one seeds. What in the world are these one seeds going to be? Who are these one seeds? Who are they? Where are they coming from? Where are they? Come on. Tell me. Tell me where the one seeds are. You know, there's so many teams in the mix for a one seed. There's so many in the mix for a two, three, and four seeds. So there's just a lot of teams. That's like 20 to 25 teams that I think, you know, has a legitimate shot. It's it's not as cookie cutter as last year, and especially with the way Saturday went, it's not cookie cutter. We're we're getting a we're getting a crazy crazy college basketball season that's going to end in crazy insanity, like I think it's going to be. And you know, the big question here, the one of the big questions here that has caused some controversy that I have is how many bids will the West Coast Conference get? How many will they get? A lot of people have projected. Four seeds, you know, your red of four teams will get a bid. But there is the issue of Santa Clara getting the benefit from not playing a game that we're supposed to, San Francisco getting screwed in the West Coast Conference Tournament. And y'all know by y'all should know by now the West Coast Conference Tournament is a little bit weird. It has like triple buys in there, double buys, you know, triple and double buys in there. Yeah. It's weird. And more conference tournaments should be like this. I know the OVC is like this. The Southland has switched to being like this. And uh, the WAC, yeah, the WAC, I think, you know, is like this now. So, you know, crazy. This is how some of these conferences should be, at least the one big conferences. They should be like this. Like, there's no reason to have a whole tournament that you could lose your top team in. So, you know, whatever the case may be, Hopefully somebody finds the solution, you know, because the casuals are getting all angry in people's replies and stuff like that, you know, the big college basketball insiders replies and stuff like that. So they're getting all angry and pissy about it. But this week is going to be huge. Again, Texas has a big week. You know, a lot of teams, you know, you know, like Texas, Arkansas, Kentucky. I mean, everybody just has big weeks. And this is the biggest week of the regular season, the final week of the regular season before conference tur before most of the conference tournaments anyway get the full gear. So with that, I'm gonna leave y'all with that, and I'll come back to you on Tuesday with our channel update, baby. Yes, we have a channel update. And there's gonna be there's gonna be some explanations of some things you know that you know are gonna be done because we're gonna get some more stuff in. So you know, hopefully everything goes well this week and i'll see you all you know on what tuesday like i said so stay here come back subscribe to the channel and i'll see you soon everybody